Can so you do your David Letterman impression? <laughs> yes, uh, it, uh, it, Joe. Are you are you hip to Joe and Aaron? <laughs> yes, yes. It's I just this feels a lot more talk showy with the mugs. Yes, the- uh, we have the. Uh, uh, there's no snake cup, apparently. Yeah. Okay. So, shall we? What? <laughs> what? Why? Why? Where? What? You ready for mine? <laughs> Will this one pick it up here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? You get it? When? <laughs> so, shall we begin? Let's do it. Because we have an intro. Okay, so let's pretend like we just saw the intro. What well, no, no. This, this is, is how it. the intro it's like, We have an intro, and well, it's a little bit rough, but uh, you get the idea. Right, okay. So, uh, this is where the intro goes. So, I wanted to be something like this. Y'all ready for that? It's the show, it's the show, it's the Hey, and there you have. I think that I think that pretty much explains everything. Yeah, it, it's same. beautiful. Sometimes it's you, beautiful. you know what? It, sometimes you just got to get stuff done. Yep. Maybe you don't have a lot of time. There's Deadlines, of man. Time. Yeah, you know. So That's the same. product like, of a there, deadline. You know, project completion win done. Cool. Yep. That's awesome. Well, I am Aaron G, and you are... I'm Joe Giza. Right, and you're watching our podcast, and our podcast doesn't have a name yet, but uh, that's okay. Because, who needs a uh, name? Yeah, who needs... What isn't a name? Somebody famous said exactly. that once. Exactly. Somebody who That'd didn't be, have a podcast either. We should probably have we, a name We have a point. podcast. Yep. So we will have a name at some point. Uh, but basically, uh, this is episode zero, I guess, so we figured we would tell you all. A little bit about ourselves and what this whole thing is about. Does that sound about right? Yeah. So, why okay. don't you start? Uh, well, my name is Aaron G, or Aaron Golomatis. <gasps> Golomatis. So, I'm Aaron G, because, I mean, ain't nobody know how to say Golomatis. or we'll spell it. Go, go to Mata Maserati-ness. That's my name. Uh, and I do multimedia. All things multimedia. So, from project to completion... I can take your ideas and turn them into magic. I'm a voiceover artist. I am a videographer, photographer, uh, and uh, I'm a musician. So, but yeah, do a bunch of lots of studio stuff. I'm in and out of studios, in and out of like audio and video studios. And uh, obviously, I do voiceovers. You'll be hearing a lot of that. Uh, it just sort of happens naturally. And uh, so, I will be. Offering my opinions from that perspective, if you will. And then Joe Giza, what do you do? So my name is Joe Giza, and you can check out my website uh, at joegizamusic.com. And uh, I've got my own blog there. And I am a recording engineer, studio owner, mixer, producer. Um, I do a lot of mastering. Um, I'm a live sound engineer. I tour. I work at a local venue in town. Um, and I play guitar on the side. Yeah. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much me. So we're hoping to kind of take our two different views of this whole multimedia, media, world, music, video, arts, visual, you name it, and kind of squish it all together and give you guys some cool content. So, and sometimes it's just good to have the perspective from those, you know, those sides of the field. I think, uh, we, I know, like, you maintain a blog out of jogiesamusic.com. I have a blog, too, A2's Toolkit, uh, talking about different, like, tech tech problems and issues that people might have. And I, we begin a lot of questions uh, answering a lot of the same questions. So, hey, why not do a blog and put them all in one place? That way you can see us. Sometimes it's better to see us. I know I'm, I'm you know, I'm very attractive individual wonderful to look at yeah all the time and i think that's uh one of us should be valuable one of us needs to be very you know it's, uh, i mean why not you know, 
get the perspective visually. What was I saying? <laughs> but yes. So, so yeah. yeah. So what? Uh... Okay. So the purpose of the podcast is to talk about all things audio and visual, and we want to be able to look at it from the perspective of if you're starting out, maybe you don't, maybe you just don't have thirty thousand dollars to spend on a lens. Some of you may not have that. A few of you. Just for so those people, those few people out there who don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend on gear, uh, maybe you think, well, what do I need to spend that money on? That's what's going to be one of the perspectives of here. And uh, also, beyond that, uh, the state of the musical creative arts industry as a whole. Yeah, state of the business. Um you know, I, I go on the road a lot, so I figured we could chat about what it's like to to travel and having to keep up with all the different gear that you see out there when you're not fortunate enough to be able to bring it all in a semi truck with you, like, um, like I don't, um, <laughs> you know, working with that kind of stuff. Um, and then we wanted to do just a ton of gear reviews and talk no. about, um, you know gear from local companies there's a ton of stuff happening we're in detroit area michigan and there's a ton of stuff going on here and we thought it'd be really cool to feature some of those guys and gals and um everything from the little dog all the way up to the to the big stuff and and just check it all out and show you kind of what you can do with the type of gear that we're using you know some of it's industry standard top of the line some of it's little things in the corner that maybe nobody's heard about or less people are using and we're getting great results so we figured we'd share all that with you guys too so yeah sometimes i call it like the magic gear list it's like you mm -hmm. know you have cer certain go-to things that you know are always going to be a 10 like on a scale of one to ten yep so it's like i know uh one of the ideas was to talk about even something as simple as the the sure sm58 you know yep. or even 57 so just things like that. But you also, like some of our, in our toolkit, uh, we have some very interesting monitors that we use. And we'll talk, a, well, we'll end up talking a lot about gear. But one of the highlights of, even in this studio, are some very interesting speakers. Please tell us about these speakers, Joe Giza. What is significant about them? Well, they're currently... Uh... They are currently um, the first generation of the Precision Studio Monitor line by Giz Acoustic, which is um, technically my dad's company, but I actually designed these, and uh, he he does a lot of tuning and system tuning, and we fabricate them together, and we build speakers, and this is serial number one, two, and then three and four are in another studio just up the road at the Mission Studios. The Mission Recording Studio. Dot com. Dot com. And, um, yeah, check them out. We do a lot of stuff out of there, too. And, um, yeah, so we're going to we're gonna get into these guys here in a little bit. But they're they're fun. And uh, First we'll... generation. Whenever you say generation, I always think of Star Trek. Yep. So it's like the first generation. And then the next generation Whoa. will come in a later podcast. It's <laughs> an exact representation of that instrument. That was the wrong thing. Think about theme. that. That uh, the theremin. It's like, hey, what if we had an instrument that would like scream like a crazy person? Why would we have an instrument like that? I mean, because then it would be like space. So, what kind of what kind of stuff are you going to be bringing to the table here? You're gonna, um, you know, obviously you're a uh, you call yourself a, a multimedia specialist, or is that what I, that's what I call you? Yeah. You have a different word. I call him a multimedia specialist because he does the whole sh the, the works, the whole shebang. Well, a lot of it is like uh, unless you're like. Unless you have an established company in Los Angeles and your last name is Spielberg, uh, you you don't have the benefit of just doing one thing. So a lot of producers, producers, are doing everything. Uh, so if you're going to do everything, you might as well do everything well. So yeah, and that's you, what I'm bringing to the table. A lot you, of times, you really do that. Oh, thank um, you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, we we work a lot together. So maybe I'm biased, but. I also work with a lot of other people, so I feel like I have a pretty good, uh, a good range, you know, and and um, and you really bring a lot to the table as far as um, keeping the bigger picture in mind. Um, you know, you talked about earlier from you know inception to completion or conception to completion. No. <laughs> um, 
seeing a whole project through and seeing it through perhaps a different lens, no pun intended, but, um, you know, you, you look at music creation through, uh, like, like you're creating it for video or the other way around. You might shoot your video specifically to have this audio going along with it, this music or, or whatever. So I feel like there's this strange network of things going on up well, there all the time. And that's kind of what, uh, was really cool. I mean, you know, that's a really important skill to have. And it's kind of unique because of your approach, your approach to film is unique. I don't know anybody else that shoots the way you do. Um, I appreciate and that. the fact that you're a musician too, you know, he, what he didn't mention earlier is you're a fantastic singer, fantastic guitar player, um, and can play a lot of different instruments and not that, not that that's your gig or what you do, but you can use those, that background, that um, kind of energy. I don't know. That sounds strange, but you know that that perspective. That perspective yeah. to bring that to the projects that you get hired to work on. So, you know, a lot of times I'll get hired to record a session. So I'm engineering. I might be producing the band too. I'm engineering, but I hire him to be there just for that viewpoint and that energy and he's got a really good way of communicating with people and also a really good ear so you know um uh, i like that. i like to think that i've got a pretty good ear too you know but we kind of bounce things off each other and um i feel like that's that's kind of the big the big thing that um that kind of puts you at the top of the list to have in the studio i'm bringing i'm looking at it strictly from that side because that's what i spend most of my life doing but you know if no, you're shooting I, a movie I, if, I appreciate that if i was Thank shooting you. a movie i would definitely want to call you there even if i didn't like you know i didn't need another shooter or a producer or whatever like you're a good person to just have there yeah oh i appreciate that and that's that's pretty much what i try to do uh it's like i do a lot of things and then i started well, okay I started out doing sound effects and mm-hmm. then I found out and doing sound effects because I'd always been a musician and uh, approaching studios and stuff like that from the, you know, from early on. Now, did you, did you just make sound effects like yeah, with I your mouth? Yeah, I designed uh, sound, oh, I like, did some of them with my mouth and then but, uh, like, you know, cardboard boxes and uh, what is it, lighting things on fire and all that stuff for a couple of different sound effects uh, collections. And then from there, learning how to edit, I got able to understand like the recording aspect of music and i've been doing music for like as long as i can remember uh but then shortly after that i found out that a lot of video editing softwares uh were very similar to audio editing softwares and what was messed up about it is video especially at that time was very very slow so Mm -hmm. i was very impatient i don't know if you can tell that uh, I was very impatient because audio was like really, really fast, and I was a very fast audio editor. So in video world, everything was moving so slow. So I ended up accidentally being very, very fast at recording or at editing video. Mm-hmm. And then I noticed that you know some of the things that that I was getting, it's like, well, I would pick certain shots because of a certain feel or a certain look. I would get frustrated because it's like, well, I wasn't getting more of those type of shots. So I began to look more at those type of things and it's like well wait a minute i need to just learn how to use a camera so that i know how to do this and i'll be able to edit you know faster you can just make your own shots exactly so then from there i went and i found out wow i really like these dslr cameras they're really cool i i mean maybe i should you know get into photography and being able to understand so i did everything kind of backwards but because of that journey i have a very interesting perspective on all of those elements of creativity and i think that that it's it's unique from the perspective of somebody who was starting out you wanted to just be a guitar player or from years ago when you were creating content you wanted to be a storyteller you want to be a director or you wanted to be a photographer but in this area having visited all of those each one has influenced the other and i think the new content creators are on the same journey well, there's a lot of gear out there there are a lot of tools out there that are there to help you and it takes so much time to learn all that stuff and to, to figure it all out. Well, that's what I want this podcast to be. Mm-hmm. It's like, look, this is a fast track to the front of the line. It's mm-hmm. great to be a trailblazer and all that stuff, but if you're blazing a trail right next to a trail that has already been blazed, then you're <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> and you need to do better. <laughs> so it's like, now, since you're talking all about me, what I love about Joe is that Joe is actually an old soul. It's 
it's so funny because your a lot of Joe's perspective is like the perspective of somebody who's recorded. I feel like you could walk out of your door and uh, in a time bubble and would have recorded the Beatles album. It's like the way that it was. It's like and your one can only hope. Yeah, but your desire for or your attraction to vintage gear uh, and like vintage guitars and and just that whole uh, what, what was the terminology we used before? Classic. Yeah, classic instruments and, and means of recording has really added uh, depth to a lot of projects that we've worked on. Like from the perspective of someone who appreciates uh, tube anything <laughs> or you know analog everything, it's mm -hmm. like. It, it's really interesting. I know a lot of the projects that we've worked on, it's been very helpful to be uh, approaching a project with, from those two ends of the spectrum. So hurry up and get it done by any means necessary. Uh, sometimes that large perspective from multiple things can get you lost and not have you appreciate the, the finer things of life, sort of the vintage world of life. And I think that uh, you will all benefit from that are example with this podcast yeah i feel like it's really important to um to kind of marry those two you know technology is always changing and of course that you know entertainment and music and video is right at the forefront of a lot of that stuff especially with computers now so it's real important to stay you know bleeding edge and really understanding and utilizing what's what's what we're uh you know handed these days because honestly it's so much superior in so many ways than what we had even 20 years ago even 10 years ago it's amazing what you can do these days and it's fantastically creative but there's so much to be said for you know hit rec records are still mixed on analog consoles and you know there's still a beauty of plugging into a tube amp or singing into a ribbon microphone from the 40s like there's there's character and class to that kind of stuff so kind of marrying the two of those is that's what we're all about here at wellington studios and that's kind of um uh, that's kind of i guess why we work so well together you're a little bit more on edge and <laughs> not on edge <laughs> you're a little bit more cutting edge, on the and, cutting edge yeah. and i try and uh you know i try and rein things back a little bit and and say well let's you know let's let the tubes overdrive a little bit and call it a day yeah so, no, definitely. I think uh, our our projects uh, benefit from that. And yours can too. And yours can too. That's right. Listening to the podcast that has not been named yet. Energy and Joe Gaze the Show. There you go. I don't know if you know that. But uh, yes, all of those instruments were done by Complete Lunatic. I didn't even know who did know Somebody else was. That was something. Yeah. Somebody else was doing that. Yeah, that was even though it's probably part of a library of some kind. Yeah, but yes. Also, hey, if you are a creator of content or a creator of gear uh, or any all things tech, if you're a venue or something like that, and you'd like us to come out and review your uh, equipment, venue, gear, anything, uh, that's what we're here for. And uh, we're going to start out. I think probably the first few shows, some go to things. Uh, some things that we love to use, uh, like every day, or like Surefire uh, tens. I, like, I use that terminology a lot. You know, one through ten. You know, you want to pull from the bag. You know, is it going to be a definite ten all the time? Uh, and maybe some things to to avoid. Uh, I know we talked about before. It's like, what if you show up to a gig and you realize that they don't have any gear or subs or anything? Picking the tweeters. <laughs> then what do you yeah. do? So, um, yeah, it's going to be cool. I think uh, I think we're going to cover a lot of good ground, and we're going to be super open to any kind of feedback that you guys want to give us. Um, we're going to be sure to publish a lot of notes of the stuff that we talk about in the comment section um, so that you can check out links and everything directly right there or follow links on the screen that somehow he's going to make, you're going to make yes, pop like up. Maybe it could happen somewhere. like right here. Wow! And, um, you know, send us messages if there's stuff that you want us to talk about or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. So. Uh, also, probably for right now, because uh, we're still setting up an email and all that jazz, uh, reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, or you can basically pretty much, I didn't even mention my site. You can go to AaronGTV.com 
And all of my social links are there. All of the the, the uh, blog that I mentioned is there. Actually, you can go, you can find Joe's, uh, a link to Joe's site from there as well. But Joe, give your site as well. And uh, Yeah, well, I, I did mine already, but uh, it's www.jogiesamusic.com. Check it out. If you just type in jogiesamusic.com, it works. But yes, I enjoy the W's. It's a good letter. W, W, W. Exactly. Man, that's what I say in my head every single time. That's why I do it. So what did we want to cover today? What do we want to talk about? Because we've been ranting for a little while about how awesome we are. And uh, I think that's... My brain's starting to hurt. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Go check us out. And, uh, just watch our stuff. And we will know that there's a reason that you want to hear from us. But yes. Very good. One ring. We are German. Bing. So do you want to just do that? I, I think we just sign out then from there just, or something. I mean, like special effects. It's probably going to be cut off in the frame, knowing my luck, but... Uh, be sure to go to http colon slash slash www.g o g i e